Welcome to Wrong Time Watch. My name is Kevin, and today we're looking at the MMI Watches Sky Hunter. Uh, the pricing for this watch, from what I can tell, currently is three hundred ninety-nine dollars uh, up until March thirty-first. Uh, I'll leave a link to the website. I think you'll see what I'm talking about. There's some different uh, price scales on there. So this watch has a sapphire crystal with AR coating applied to the underside. Uh, there are, I think, five different colorways. This one is, of course, a white dial. And the loom on the hand and the indices is an old Radium X1 loom. And then the dial has loom applied as well. That's right, this is a full loom dial watch. Uh, the loom on the dial is Super Luminova. It says white slash blue so i think that means it's uh, white uh, without seeing the loom and then when the lights are turned off it will be blue color so the watch is 316l stainless steel you see it's mostly brushed brushed on the sides brushed on the top and then you have this polished bezel uh, this watch is a prototype the one change i'm aware of is the male end links will become female end links and there is a picture of that on the website. And other than that, this thing is, I believe, production intent. So let's zoom in on the dial here. I'm sure you notice the uh, date cutout, the date wheel, whatever you want to call it here. The uh, inner circle here is uh, all cut out for the date. You can see right there below 12 o'clock, I have the date set to be the first. And you can see that uh, orange blip of color there through the cutout. Now, I was trying to think about the direction of the date here. You would think that it would go 1 through 31 going around this way, but it goes around the other way. So I guess it's just the way, way that the uh, date wheel turns uh, as you progress through the days. Anyway, here's a close look. Uh, you can see it does have a chapter ring. Now, uh, these are printed indices. So I think it's a cool looking watch. It wears well. It's a 38 millimeter watch. I'll zoom back out here and show it to you on my wrist here in a moment. So some of the other specs. It does have a Miyota 9015 movement, which is a great movement. It does have a signed screw down loomed crown. The watch is rated to 100 meters water resistance. Let's uh, undo the clasp here. So you can see on the back it has a engraving of an airplane or a jet looks like. I was actually sure what that is. Um, you know, actually, I think I recall reading on the website um, the reason why this was chosen is I think this was used in the uh, Singaporean uh, Air Force. So, like I said, I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, 150 pieces are to be made here. And again, I'm not sure if that's per colorway or total. I'm assuming per colorway, but you can see uh, 9015 on the back there. Hopefully you can see that. Yes, there we go. 9015, 100 meter water resistance, Sky Hunter, Sapphire Crystal, and then 316L stainless steel. So we do have solid end links. Uh, and again, these are male, but the, for production, they'll be female. Solid links. Uh, one uh, downside. Perhaps this is the downside. These are split pins, not screwed links. Um, you know, I feel either way on that. As long as the, the price uh, is representative of using split pins, I'm fine with split pins. Uh, screw links are fine too. But you know, those do back out every once in a while, so you don't have to worry about that with split pins or with uh, pin and collar. I'd rather have split pin than pin and collar. Do have a stamped clasp here. This portion is stamped. Five micro adjusts. This portion is milled, so dual pusher with the safety fold over. Um, I'd really like to see these without the safety fold over. I don't think you really need that with dual pushers. And uh, the bracelet does taper. It tapers from 20 down to 18. I'd like to see it tapering down to 16. But other than that, uh, I think it's uh, a fine watch. It's been wearing well on my wrist here. So let's talk about the dimensions. 
So normally I would measure the tip to tip on the male links, but since this is changing the female, I did not measure that. So we're looking at 45.3 lug to lug, 38 millimeter case diameter, 10.7 millimeter thick. So uh, nice and thin with that Miyota 9015 movement. And as I already mentioned, 20 millimeter lug width, tapering down to 18 here. 6.4 millimeter crown. I think this crown looks uh, nicely sized for this watch. Nicely proportioned here. And size for my six and a half inch wrist, it weighs in at 133 grams. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it and it really does help me out. So as I mentioned already, I have a six and a half inch wrist, uh, 52 millimeter wristband here in uh, tip to tip, uh, 45.3. So I think it wears well on my wrist. A uh, nice brushed three link bracelet. I would like to see a chamfered polished edge, but it looks fine the way it is. It has seems to have a different brushing here. It looks like a radial brushing. And then that's just uh, typical brushing on the side there. All right, with that said, let's take a look at the loom. Actually, maybe I'll compare it to, let's compare it to a Hamilton here, side by side. I think this is a 40 millimeter. Hamilton and khaki field khaki king actually hamilton king khaki whatever it is so here's a look at these side by side all right let's take a look at the loom we'll compare this to my seiko skx well the mmi sky hunter is of course on the left and uh, looks to be out of focus there we go a little better in focus here um this thing is extremely bright like a flashlight um, but, you know, a typical loomed watch is, is uh, much easier for me to tell the time on. Perhaps it is for you too, but they don't look nearly as cool as a full loom dial. <laughs> you know, the, the, the dial, of course, is, is much brighter than the hands on the SKX, but it does look like it's dimming down a bit here. Uh, the hands are, of course, brighter on the SKX, but anyway, just a quick look at the loom here. And that will conclude this video. Actually, let me hit this with the UV light again. It looks pretty cool under the UV light. Uh, at least it does by eye. Not so much on camera, but anyway, there you go. So anyway, that will conclude this video. As always, thank you for your time and thank you for watching.